Chua Chimi Mida. I'm Jordi Bailina. I'm the technical lead at uh, Polygon ZK EVM. And today, let me just take the clicker here. Today I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna explain mainly I'm gonna divide my presentation in three parts. First, I'm gonna give you a give a, a overview of the current status of the Polygon ZKVM that we launched it, uh, last March. Uh, then I'm gonna explain a little bit the then I'm gonna explain a little bit the future of Polygon, more the long-term strategy, and finally I'm gonna give some details of the current work for the coming month that we are doing in the, in the Polygon CKVM. So let's start, as I mentioned, um, Polygon CKVM is the first uh, CKVM that launched, actually it's the current CKVM that's running mainnet uh, in Ethereum. EVM is Ethereum virtual machine, that means that's fully compatible with Ethereum. Uh, users can deploy uh, smart contracts in the layer two without having to use any specific uh, uh, tooling. They can reuse all the tooling that's in Ethereum. Here is uh, Harhat, uh, Remix, uh, Truffle. They can just connect their wallet, Metamask wallet or whatever wallet that they have in Ethereum. They just connect to uh, the Polygon CKVM and they work exactly the same way without any, without any um, friction uh, for the developers and for the users. It has been, we, we, we tried to do a, let's say a soft launch. This is a very new technology and we don't want it to go crazy from the beginning. There is a lot of, a lot of new code and a lot of new things and we want to get uh, maturity. So we are, uh, we are taking this blockchain as a baby. We are taking from the roots. We are onboarding, we're onboarding um, a lot of DeFi applications uh, right now. Uh, we are seeing, we are monitoring very much, we're seeing all the needs they have, and we are just trying to have a healthy uh, growth. But currently, well, it's already ramping up uh, at this point, and uh, well, we are happy how uh, the network is progressing and getting, at getting traction uh, so far. So, I would like now to explain a little bit the, what's the idea of uh, Polygon, why Polygon, um, can scale, I can bring this technology uh, to the society, to millions of users. Well, as you know, Polygon is a scaling, is, um, is, uh, the division is to, to scale uh, Ethereum. Um, and to do that, we are just having a layer two uh, a strategy. The idea, how we see uh, the future in Polygon is many, uh, a kind of a constellation of uh, roll-ups of layer twos. We have the first one. The first one is the Polygon ZKVM, but it can be other, other chains here. Some of them are public chains. Some of them are going to be private chains or chains from associations and, and so on. And all of them are going to be secured by a, by a ZK prover. Okay. This is what gives the security. All of them will share the same liquidity with L1 L2 bridge. And because it's a ZK uh, system, uh, the time for exiting uh, the ro a roll-up is very, very small. It's just the time that takes the, to generate the proof. And this can be as low as uh, 30 seconds or one minute. That means that uh, there is a composability. It's possible to do a composability between roll-ups and you can be in one private roll-up do a, maybe an exchange or do a, some lending or some DeFi operation in a public roll-up and then go back to the, to the private roll-ups or in between private roll-ups you can communicate one each other. And this is possible again because this ZK proof. This ZK proof gives you finality, gives you details so you can move between roll-ups uh, very, very easily. The idea of this ecosystem also is that it may be roll-ups that require centralized or decentralized uh, sequencers, depending on the, uh, on the application. And here we'll have a kind of a staking hub for, especially for the centralized sequencers, where um, it can be a multi-sequencer um, multi uh, network, okay? And all the, all, the, all the proof, the idea is that instead of each uh, roll-up having a specific proof, what we can do is, they call this proof and aggregate uh, all this proof in a single 
in a single proof. So that means that the cost of proving is going to be divided by all the networks. The proof right now is really cheap, and this will allow us to generate the proof every 30 seconds or every minute, just as a clock, okay? And then is when you are transferring, you will be able to, so the, the, the communication, the interoperability between the rollups will, will, will happen, okay? So this is um, how um, it would look like. Um, we are focusing very much in, 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 in the throughput, in having, so in the scaling, so that this, each of these changes can generate the maximum throughput for, for itself. We are working a lot in the current uh, ZKBM to scale it as much uh, uh, as we can. And then when this limit is reached, then we have this multi-chain this multi -chain idea. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, it's going to be a network. Um, it's going to be an, uh, an infrastructure network for aggregating for aggregating many proof. This will be a consensus layer here for coordinating the generation of the different proofs of, of the of the rollups and aggregating all of them. Um, this idea of composability, this idea of constellation between uh, rollups. This is really important. This is what will give a, a full ecosystem. And the idea of the decentralizing, decentralizing the sequencer. This is very important because uh, 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 decentralizing sequencers, I mean, we are building decentralized applications. And even centralized sequencer is not, maybe the, the, the word centralized is not the most appropriate because uh, the sequencers, they cannot do much. They still have some some power maybe to kick somebody out of the system and so on. So the centralized sequencers are becoming really important. Okay. All of this is going to be, we are creating what's a polygon stack. It's a ZK polygon stack. We start from the, from the prover. Prover is based in Plonky 2. Right now we are writing the Plonky 3. It's some, it's some much faster uh, prover than Plonky 2, which is actually really fast. And it's the, the, the fastest prover in the, in the system. Uh, we have the ZKVM and Maiden. Maiden is a uh, uh, technology, it's a different paradigm. It's not Ethereum equivalent, but it will allow to have like a more asynchronous, it's a kind of asynchronous uh, uh, network. And uh, well, it will allow a, a, another level of scalability at some point. Um, we have the client or the, cli the client uh, itself. We have the bridge, the staking hub for this Mainly, it's the staking hub is for the centralizing uh, sequencers, for the, this, the, the, the proof generation, and also for some data availability in the case of Validiums. They will have also an important role here. And all that on top of, uh, of Ethereum, because at the end, what we are doing is scaling Ethereum. Okay? So now let me explain you a little bit what we are, what the, what's the current work and the immediate work, the work for the next, uh, for the next I would say, for the next six months, and what, what we are working in the Polygon CKBM. The first thing is we are going from a type three to a type two rollup. That means, so right now we are, I would say, almost compatible to Ethereum, but there are some missing, I would say some specific and missing pieces. Most of the applications don't use it, but some, but to be co fully compatible to Ethereum, we need to implement that. These are SHA-256, Belake, and, and pairing pre smart contracts, except for these, all the opcodes and all the system is uh, fully, compatible with Ethereum, and I would say that right now, like 99% of the applications are fully compatible, but we're finishing that, and we hope that in the next version we can provide these, uh, these uh, pre-compiled smart contracts. Another thing that we are doing is we're improving a lot the, the prover. Uh, so the prover right now uh, generating a 10 million gas uh, proof. It, it already takes like uh, one minute and a half between one minute and a half and two minutes in a big server, but it's a normal server, not GPUs and nothing else. It's just a big, a big server with a lot of memory and many cores, but it's a, a normal server. But uh, we need to improve that a little bit. Right now what we have is like a big monolithic proof uh, that, just, that proves 10 million gas. But um, in this proof, uh, if you see how is the proof is made, we have different stand machines for do, doing different pieces. For example, we have, we, we can call them like a sup, uh, like coprocessors, okay? We have a main processor and then we have a, a memory, we have a binary, we have arithmetic operations, 
uh, we have catchers, we have different arithmetic steam machines. The problem is that this is fixed, is, is, is fixed. and if um, we have a, um, not many catchers, for example, we are spending a lot, I mean, we, we are spending a lot of resources uh, building a proof uh, uh, that has no catchers in there. So this is not, this is a little bit suboptimal. So the idea is to have different sizes, so that this, this is, each of the state machine can have different sizes, and instead of having a monolithic proof, it's a composite proof with uh, different sizes, and this will adapt uh, uh, much better. So here we'll have much, uh, much, much optimization, more, much more optimization, and we will not have to do a kind of a Tetris that we need to do that in, that today in order to optimize the the, the transactions inside. Okay. Um, so the advantages is that we are not wasting cells in the in the in the prover. Um, this allows also not to count resources. One important one important feature of the of the Polygon CKBM is that it's censorship resistant. That means that uh, you cannot. So if if the if the centralized sequencer um, decides not to include your transaction. Uh, you can always uh, generate an L1 transaction with a specific L2 transactions that will be forced so that the sequencer will have the obligation to include that. Uh, okay, if, uh, so, and the, this, uh, this um, what the, the consequence of that is that you can always claim your funds even if the sequencer uh, decides not to, not to, not to, uh, do any transaction that you're sending to him. Okay. Um, this prover also will require smaller, smaller servers with less uh, memory, and also probable will fit some of these uh, provers will fit also in the GPU, so we will expect also uh, a, a, a much better performance uh, on that. Said that, well, um, said that, I need to say that. Uh, the proving cost currently is not the is not the, the proving the proving cost of the ZKVM is not the critical factor. That was probably the when we started to design the ZKVM was the most uh, concerning uh, parameter, but right now is not the critical factor. So the the, the proof is uh, 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 it's relatively it's relatively cheap. Okay. Well, another thing that we are working on is, is in this, uh, we call it PIL. This is a language for writing, for writing proof. Uh, well, here we have a lot of, I don't want to extend here too much, but here we, we are extending this language so that we are somehow generalizing. This is gonna be part of the stack, and if you want to build other provers for other systems, this will be more, uh, more generic, okay? This new system will support these variable degree, um, variable degree proofs. It will have a more constructive language. This is one thing that we saw, for example, in the audit that there we had like external, external uh, scripts to generate part of these uh, of these constraints. So we are embedding that in the same language, so that's much easier to to audit and to it will be more, more consistent uh, in the language. Uh, well, we, we will have functions. This fun well, these functions this will allow to make us more complex. The language will allow us to make more complex uh, circuits and to reduce also a lot of the cost on this. It will allow also to build, uh, so right now we have some hard-coded um, operations like uh, plug-ups or permutation checks inside the prover. Uh, we, we are just enabling in the language to create these uh, more low-level uh, objects and this will open for new constructions in like uh, range checks or new constructions that are happening currently in the zero knowledge. This will allow us to 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 include them and uh, well to use all the performance that these new uh, uh, systems that are currently in research we can uh, uh, put inside the inside the prover. Okay. Also, the constant generations, there is a lot of parameters on the circuit that, again, they are from external scripts. We will be able, we will be able also to put them inside the, inside the pill. Okay. Well, some other details, we can have like accessing not to the next row, but having accessing to the previous rows and next rows. Um, um, 
will connect. Also, we will split. Right now, the prover is very, I would say, quite specific for the ZKVM, but uh, we are doing, doing that more generic. So that's not only for the ZKVM. Maybe somebody wants to build a ZK WASM or ZK, and this will give, um, as a community, this prover will become very much a standard for generating zero knowledge proof, especially for scalability. This big zero knowledge, uh, this big zero knowledge proof, that are important for the for the rollups. Okay. Another point, and probably this is the most important point that we are working on, is in data compression. Data comp the, right now, the rollups, the biggest limitation is the, is the data availability. Uh, we are working really hard in compressing this data. What means compressing this data? Well, there is, need to mention here that the rollups, there is like two approaches uh, for uh, putting the data. Well, you need, in a rollup, you need to put, the data needs to be available because there is an attack that, uh, if, uh, um, as, um, if a prover generates a proof but the data is not available, well, you know that you know the current state is valid, but you, know, you don't know which is this state or where this state comes from. So it's important that the data is available, okay? And this is very much, right now, the way to make this data available is putting this data uh, on chain, okay? Um, so putting this data on chain is still a little bit expensive, and so what we'd want to do is, well, um, first is compress this data so that we put the minimal data on chain so that the transactions are cheaper. And the other thing is also Ethereum is working uh, very hard in, in, in lowering the, well, in increasing the capacity, so lowering the, the, the price for the data availability. And this is the, the Dank Shard protocol and, the, and, the, and the, well, the proto Dank Shard that's going to happen next. So what we are working very much is in this uh, compression of the data. Um, uh, here, just to mention uh, these two systems, one, the way to compress the data, you can do it two ways. One is put the transactions on chain or put what is called the, the state diffs or the difference of the state that are changing. These are the two approaches. We are betting a lot with putting the transactions on chain. We believe that the financial system uh, understands about transactions, not about uh, uh, state diffs. Okay? And the other advantage of uh, putting transactions is that transactions in general are made by humans, okay? And human-generated data has, um, is less random. It has less entropy. So the compression is much better. Let me put you an example here. Imagine that you are uh, compressing a value. A human will send 1.1 ether or 1.2 ether. We'll put one, two significant bits or three significant bits. But in a state transition, uh, maybe you need to decrease the gas. So here you have, uh, I mean, the, the quantity of information for putting the difference of the gas that's more random thing, it's, it's, it's higher. So we can compress uh, a lot, much, much better these transactions. There is other parameters to compress. For example, in the in a ZK rollup, we can substitute all the signatures, which is a, an important part of the data, well, of that of the transactions, by a single proof that proof that all the signatures are valid. We are kind of aggregating the signatures. We also, um, well, for example, another thing that consumes a lot of data is the addresses, uh, but we can use the. So, of course, the first time you're using an address, you will have to send that specific address, but the second time that you are using, you can reference that as, a, as an index, as a reference to a previous transaction. So all this will give us, a, I would say, um, uh, this will give us a, a, a total, uh, more or less, we are, we are estimating a 5x. This is a very pessimistic optimization. We are the current, currently, we are seeing that this may be 6, 7x easily, depending on the transactions, but this will be given in the, in the data compression. That when we add to the EIP 4844, that uh, proto sharding that will happen probably at the end of this year or at the beginning of next year in Ethereum, this will give us a total of 50x, okay? And this will be uh, the cost reduction that we will see in six months uh, uh, in the in the ZKVM, this is the direct cost that we have to pay, uh, that, uh, that, that the users have to pay for the transaction. So this is where the real scalability is is is, is happening. We're also working in the node performance optimization, and I, I like to explain the example that we're building a ZKVM. We build like a, a, a very fast engine, a very good engine. Okay, but the, the ZKVM is not engine, it's a car, okay? And, and, 
uh, you need to, <laughs> so it's not, if you want to have a car that's running at 1,000 miles per hour, uh, it's not enough to have a good engine. You need uh, good wheels, you will need a good, uh, a good uh, aerodynamics, you need, to, you, need to, you need to go to all the scro uh, screws of, the, of a car. You, need also, you mainly need to build like a new car so that you can run at that, at that speed. And this is also uh, an important work. I would say it's the main work that we are doing uh, inside the Polygon CKVM is to, to bring this car to 1,000 miles per hour. If you want, we want to bring this uh, system to uh, thousands uh, of transactions per, per second. Okay. Another point that I want to mention is that we are, as we are Ethereum compatible, we are benefiting of all the work that's done in the space. And one example is the account abstraction. All the effort that's happening right now the, with the 4337, in the Polygon ZKVM, we have it for we have it for free. Uh, it's just deploying this smart contract in the Polygon ZKVM, and we will have a full support of a contract uh, of a contract transaction, fully compatible with Ethereum. We don't have to um, do a special wallets. We don't have to do special tooling. We are reusing all the tooling that the ecosystem is building. Okay, and this is the nice thing of the ZKVMs that we are. Um, part of the Ethereum space and having all the synergies that uh, the Ethereum is uh, that the Ethereum is happening and this is well it's, it's the first example so I mentioned before decentralizing the sequencer this is a little bit more a little bit long longer run because it's a little bit more complex but uh, a way to understand uh, the sequencer is uh, so you can replace the sequencer as a consensus system. Right now, we have a kind of a consensus. Let's say it's a, it's a, a dictatorship uh, a consensus. It's a centralized sequencer. So whatever the centralized sequencer is, this is what's a consensus. Okay? Uh, but you can. The idea is to replace uh, this uh, consensus, this centralized consensus, with a more decentralized consensus that will depend on the different applications. Here we are in the consensus, we, have it. we are in the, trilemma, in, the, in the blockchain trilemma, so we need to choose what's the right uh, place. Uh, if we want to be in, in the, if, we, if, if the Ethereum is enough, we would be in what we, have the, what we understand as proof of efficiency. This is a protocol that mainly don't, the is using the L1 as the same consensus, but this has the limitations, it has the parameters that Ethereum has. But sometimes you want to have consensus that, for example, if you want a finality time of uh, one, two seconds, you need a different kind of consensus, sacrificing or other things. So having this temporary consensus until the transactions are uh, in layer one, this is maybe important for different applications. And this is where we are also working uh, very hard in Polygon. Security is... Uh, non-stop investment. This is our highest priority in Polygon. These are complex systems. We are investing, investing a lot of resources, internal and external, in security and auditing. Right now, for example, we are, we in, the, in the coming weeks, we are gonna, we are gonna uh, do a new upgrade on the network and it's, uh, uh, well, it's uh, currently it's uh, being audited by external by external teams. All the changes, everything that we are touching, this is really important, and we keep the bug bounties, and we take is something that we take very seriously in in Polygon because this is what at the end is the well, it's important is the value that we are giving somehow. Okay, from the trailing wheels right now, uh, well, next stage is. Uh, well, we need to, the first thing is enable force, enable force transactions. Everything is implemented, but um, in the upcoming weeks, we are going to enable that. Then in order to be what we call it in the stage two, in the, as according to Vitalik's rollups, we need to remove the, the security council. Uh, currently, we have a kind of a kill switch with a six out of eight, uh, is a six out of eight uh, multi-seek, uh, with uh, recognizing members from the community. We need to remove that. 
uh, well, this will happen. It, it's um, we're in the trailing wheels. We are going step by step, but this is uh, ab ab absolute planning. And the other thing is also extending the time block. Right now, we have 10 days for for updating the the roll up, and we need to extend that to 30 days, which is the recommended. But here, for practical issues, uh, we are still at, at 10 days. These are the the things that we need to do for the trailing wheels. This is the the, the this is the full roadmap summary of the things that we have been talking and but the idea is that uh, uh, at the end of the year uh, having this 50x this is the goal that we have uh, and, uh, that we have in in mind and what we are working as always is no commitment but uh, the only commitment that we have is that we're working hard to scale ethereum so thank you very much and uh, thank you for inviting me here and thank you um, thank you all Thank you.